Hello, everybody. So yeah, uh, organizers moved me up from the long slot. So if anyone needs to leave uh, to the beginning of the coffee break, please leave now. We're going to be working until 3:30. Um, let's. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to briefly introduce myself. Um, so my words have more meaning to you. Uh, what I've been doing previously, some of the things. I'm one of the founding members of uh, local search security experts group. I'm founder of uh, a local Latvian IT security company, First Limited. I've also spent some time working uh, with Latvian MOD, helping them on national cybersecurity policy coordination. Um, and I had the privilege and pleasure to be the national expert of Latvia on the NIS directive that has uh, just passed in the European Union Parliament. I'd like to give a reason why I think security is getting more important in Latvia. Granted, it's only one of the reasons, but I do like to believe that the document it was passed by the government of ministers, the document I was working on together with a, quite a large group of uh, other people from the government, which defines compliance as minimal security requirements for information systems, both for local government, governments and the national government here in Latvia, uh, has a lot to do with it. But my larger goal in life, not only when I was working for the government and not only now when I'm working for my own company, my larger goal in life is to promote the importance of IT security and to explain that IT security is important and to change people's mindset about that. So just briefly, a couple of things in there, in these requirements. You can, of course, if, if you, I don't think we have any persons here who, who enjoy reading legal documents, but if we do, you can, you can go check it out, uh, in, in Likumila. So anyway, the document actually has a minimal technical security requirements for all the systems in two categories, uh, high priority systems and low priority systems. Um, it also has a requirement to create security policy document because you know it's, it's government, you can't have, you, you can't not have documents. Um, it has requirement to have penetration tests in specific circumstances, which is an important part of assuring security and outsourcing requirements so that you uh, in many cases, you cannot just choose a random country to outsource your IT project or to select your hosting if you are local government or, or, or the government. So that's a good thing. Um, final slide about what I do. So my company, First Limited. Uh, what we do there, we do data acquisition and analysis. Uh, we, of course, work in IT security. We don't do web development. We work in IT security and, and data acquisition. And in IT security, we've been working with such things like investigation of IT security incidents, including uh, there was uh, one or two cases where incident was actually related to WordPress. Uh, security consulting, like giving lectures, um, commenting on upcoming projects, both for, for the government and private institutions. Penetration testing, um, IT security audits. Okay, so uh, let's move to the topic then. Uh, we're going to have uh, three parts to my presentation. First of all, we will talk about some theory behind security, but, but not, the, not the boring part, the useful part. Uh, it's, it's a bit academic, a couple of slides now after this, but it's, it's a useful part about security theory, and you should try to understand it if at all possible. Then we're going to take an objective look at WordPress security. I was... Uh, I was uh, asked to do this presentation, I suppose, because because I'm always I've always been skeptical about WordPress security. So I, I kept an open mind, and when I when I was gathering data and doing my research for this, I, I actually I was hoping that uh, that that uh, I will be proven wrong about WordPress. Well, we'll see how it turned out. Um, and finally, the third part is we will talk about uh, protecting your WordPress. So we will do some. Um, I will, I will describe some things you can do yourself and some things you should contract help to, to actually make sure your WordPress is secure. Now, in my business, um, I've actually 
seen quite some serious clients. And unfortunately for now, most clients who come to us with IT security problems are, are from the finance industry. And I've seen some serious clients using WordPress for their, for their solutions. Um, that surprised me, but, but the, well, the results were, were quite good. <coughs> okay, so this is not the conference where I should talk at length about what WordPress is, right? But just as, as a formality, since these slides will be up, up on my website uh, later on, I, I put a couple of slides. There will be a um, couple of slides along the presentation, which I will just skip over, and, and they are there for you to look at later on. Uh, but here, so just to, just to show how, how diverse security requirement-wise the group using WordPress is, uh, there's, for example, this, uh, this, this random page that I found called Voice of Migration, running on WordPress. Uh, there is uh, our web page also running on WordPress. Um, and there is this uh, Defense Matters web page. When I was looking for WordPress, this is, this is the first hit I found. I don't know. Google is probably tracking me, so they knew what I'm looking for. Um, we have a lot of WordPress developers here. Do you normally like, like do that? Do you, when you have the subtitle, do you change the WordPress to, to your stuff? Like just another Defense Matters site? site? Yeah? Okay. So anyway, the academic part now. IT security consists of three things, and uh, one, of the, one of the challenges that not only um, non-security people uh, are dealing with, but also some not too competent security people are dealing with, is forgetting that security does not equal confidentiality. Security is not just about you not losing your client's email addresses. It's not just about you trying to protect your commercial secrets. Confidentiality is, of course, an important part of security. Oh, um, if I'm speaking too fast, please raise your hand. I will try to, to make it slower. So confidentiality, you can read the definition. I'm not going to do that. So confidentiality is the part that, that talks about you protecting the information that you have from unauthorized access. But there are two more equally important parts. Integrity is about modification. It's about an authorized person storing the data and being able to expect that whenever they come back, the data will be the same. It will not have been changed, changed in an unauthorized manner. Um, it will not have mixed up. So imagine you have a, a banking account and your friend has a banking account. And if integrity is not protected, your balances can just swap one day. And you log in, wow, I have 1,000. And the other one has your 100,000. Um, and third one is availability. It's a property of information system to be available when it is needed, but it's not an absolute measure. It's measured against the defined availability times. For example, in Latvia, uh, the internet, the internet banking of um, state bank, Valskasse, uh, they have defined that they're available from 8 a.m. to, to 7 p.m. Or, or 8 p.m. and then they shut down the server uh, in the evening. And it works for them. Uh, and it's okay, they, they achieve high availability because that's what, what they defined. So that's important to understand. Um, I think this is the final, final theory slide. One more thing you should understand is defense in depth. Um, I don't have time to give, uh, to give you a lot, of, uh, a lot of interesting and nice examples. Unfortunately, the, the timeline is quite, quite narrow here. But Again and again, I've seen in real life when not applying defense in depth principle leads to problems. Well, not applying it means if you don't apply it, basically say, okay, I have a firewall on my network, it's fine, I don't need to protect myself, anything else. My data is encrypted, we don't need any other protection layers. Defense in depth is protecting your data at every layer, having some protection at every of those four layers we see on the screen. And thanks to Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons for that picture, by the way. Okay, so the second part of the presentation now. Let's see how I'm doing on time. Perfect. Uh, well, I chose to compare WordPress uh, with, uh, I think this is Joomla and Drupal. I think it's a, it's a fair choice, right? Um, so how my presentation, how my data analysis is different from all other presentations here, I suppose, uh, is that I come, I come from security industry, so I use security tools to, uh, to make my analysis. So my numbers will be different, but I don't think they are not correct. I think they are. They are fine. 
and, and the percentages are, are I calculate are of course approximate, but, but again, they give an indication. So this is adoption of these three different uh, CMSs by servers on publicly accessible IPv4 connections. So that means probably that most blogs that are stored on workers.com account as one entry on the left uh, here. But it does show the market share uh, from a security perspective. Again, slides will be online, uh, well, not immediately after the presentation, but tomorrow morning uh, at kirov.org, so you don't have to take photos, but you, you are welcome to if you, need, if you want to. <clears throat> okay, so we see, uh, we see a market share here. At first, I was looking at the market share, uh, fearing that maybe, maybe my result will show that WordPress is, is, is less secure than all the other platforms. And if it's the case, maybe we can divide the vulnerability count by the market share, just justifying that, you know, it's, it's widely used, so more vulnerabilities are found. But I didn't do that because I thought of a different justification to the opposite direction. Maybe we have to multiply vulnerability count by the market share because that's how many vulnerabilities online we have. Um, so, now some, some nice, uh, nice graphs and pictures, courtesy of Shodan, a uh, great security tool. Uh, logo on the top left corner will identify the CMS uh, each picture is referring to. Um, so this shows relative usage, relative adoption of each CMS by, by server count uh, for each country. Um, where, where you see white country, uh, like the background, uh, there are no CMSs of that kind there detected. Um, well, you have to look really closely uh, because the changes, the distribution is quite similar, but some of the countries will change. Okay, so here, here is Yumla. If we go back again, yeah, right. Uh, and here is Drupal. Uh, Drupal, most notably, of course, Iceland is gone. So uh, people or whatever lives there in Iceland do not or doesn't use Drupal. Uh, Okay, top countries, this is included just for reference. You will, you will see these slides um, when you get to the slide set. Now, this is interesting. SSL versions. So SSL or, or TLS is a protocol that uh, allows you to encrypt data between your client and your server. It's uh, what, you, what normal people call HTTPS. Um, and, uh, and if your server has HTTPS installed, uh, we can take a look at what kind of version is it using. So TLS version 1.2 is the newest one, then we have 1.1, 1.0, 1, uh, 1 0, and, and these are insecure. These are like totally broken. So uh, why, why do I have the slide here? One more thing I looked at is how security conscious are administrators of different CMSs. And I think this shows, th this gives a feeling about that. If we compare, if they have updated their TLS settings accordingly, we can infer some correlation uh, about if they actually update their WordPress or Joomla or Drupal installation. So again, this is for WordPress, and absolute numbers are, of course, uh, will, will change, but we are looking at the relative proportion here. Uh, this is for, for Joomla. We see that SSL v3 uh, is higher. And this is for Drupal, again, even, even worse. The picture is even worse here. Um, SSL expired certificates, so those are certificates, encryption certificates that have expired. Because you need to renew them every three months or every, every year or, or maybe every two years, depending on your configuration. Um, well, here, again, we can see uh, a different picture. Joomla is the worst, and, and, and WordPress uh, versus Drupal is quite similar. Okay, so that's, that's the statistics. Let's, uh, let's go look at uh, security. For this, I need you to learn one, one, one term here, CVSS, Common Vulnerability Scoring System. Basically, it's a number from zero to 10, or from ah, whatever to shit hits the fan, uh, of how bad a vulnerability is. It's, it's calculated using some, some fancy formulas, but that's not what we're talking about here today. 
Okay, so here's the first slide about security, the, the first hard, hard truth. These are total vulnerabilities in the core, not in plugins, not in any, any, any extra added stuff in the core, throughout the lifetime of a product. And we have to take into account that uh, Yomo, Drupal, and WordPress appeared uh, in the market on the, in different years. But still, we'll also see a breakdown by year in later slides. Uh, we can see that WordPress in its core has quite a lot of, has had quite a lot of vulnerabilities throughout, um, throughout history. I've divided here, uh, here them in, in four categories by CVSS. So below 2.5, that's, uh, that's the gray one there. I think my, my personal, my personal and unofficial opinion is that, uh, vulnerabilities between 2.5 rarely get reported because it's like, you know, it's a meh. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not really, you don't, you don't really have to look at the gray part. But then the yellow one is between 2.5 and 5.0, not including, uh, the orange one is 5.0 to 7.5, not including. And the top one, the dark red one is 7.5 and more. And we see that, well, WordPress has a lot of discovered vulnerabilities. For this research, I did not use any, any uh, zero-day information, of course. So we are only talking about vulnerabilities that have been discovered and patched. But it, of course, the past gives us indication about the future. Now let's look at WordPress specifically. So WordPress uh, hits the market on 2003. The first year, no vulnerabilities. It's great, right? Uh, well, no vulnerabilities were found. <laughs> uh, so this is by, by the date vulnerability is published and allegedly fixed. That's, that's a breakdown by year. Again, uh, the colors mean the same. So, well, we can... Uh, 2016, of course, hasn't ended yet. So maybe we'll see some change there. Let's hope not. Uh, but, well, we do see the overall improvement in code quality from this, right? At least, at least, uh, I see it. Well, 2016 is interesting, right? It, it, it doesn't fit there a bit, but, uh, the, the, the trend is, is fine, I think. 2007, 2008 are, are years where, I don't know, people didn't have anything better to do, so they, they broke everything. Uh, so, um, not, not only CMSs, like, like other stuff too. So, Joomla, here's Joomla core. Same, same graph. It appeared um, on 2005. I, I neatly indicate that by this blank space here, so you can match them up easily when you look at the slides later. Um, 2005, it appeared on the market. We can see a lot less vulnerabilities here. And the uh, critical ones are also not that many. Um, Drupal, so again, only core. It is the first of the CMSs that appeared on the market. Uh, year was 2001. And, uh, well, again, it fares quite well. The severe vulnerabilities of 7.5 and more, not that many at all. Oh, yeah, everybody can see the count on the left, right? The numbers we're talking about, those vulnerabilities disclosed and fixed uh, each year. <clears throat> okay. So, now, uh, I wanted to have a slide where we just look at the severe vulnerabilities. A severe vulnerability usually means that, uh, well, it's, it's as a remote code execution, gain, gaining admin rights, gaining access to a database, uh, injecting some code permanently into your website. There are also some exceptions, because you have to look at the type of the vulnerability to do that. And I think I have a slide on that too. Uh, but, it means it's a, it's a pretty, pretty damn bad vulnerability that you don't want to have around in your system. So looking just at those, just at 7.5 and higher. Uh, the gray one indicates WordPress, uh, the red one Joomla, and the blue one Drupal. Well, so, uh, as we can see last year, Joomla really, really won the first place. Uh, WordPress was left second together with Drupal. But if you look at the big picture, um, again, it's, it's not that pretty, but, I have to, I have to say that from this picture again, I see the improvement of, of WordPress code quality over the years. So what solution might we have? Uh, we have these popular CMSs. Using a less popular one is, uh, well, it's hard 
you need to learn it, and there's no guarantee that the code is good. So many professional organizations may opt for choosing to make their own CMS. So the question, is it a good idea? Uh, well, there is a clear plus. Um, so I have this, I have this website, I have this blog. Uh, I've had it since, I think, 2002. I haven't blogged there for two years, but still. So from 2002 and 2014, for 12 years I've been blogging there. I wrote it myself from scratch. I took the pictures, I took the photos myself. I, I used GIMP to, to, I mean, I made everything from scratch, like, like from blank page, uh, including the code. Uh, in the first year, I found some vulnerabilities myself when, when releasing, but uh, looking at the logs, and I do, monitor, I do monitor my logs, well, it doesn't seem that uh, any vulnerabilities are there, so maybe it's a good idea. But uh, I'd like to emphasize something here. So there's a minus uh, to, to, to homebrew CMSs. So there are no publicly known vulnerabilities. I mean, there is no user base behind it. There is no administrator base, and there are no security people looking at your code. Uh, so the plus we have about vulnerabilities is also a minus. I hope you get my point here. Um, it also requires lots of resources to implement correctly, and I'm talking, of course, about both human resources and, uh, and money. It's, it's really, really expensive. But again, it depends on your threat model. What are you afraid of? What, what are your risks? So it may be right to do that, but I believe for, for many people, and, and the adoption rate of WordPress proves it, uh, WordPress is the right choice. Uh, so remember, uh, oh, I, I left, I left letter out, damn. Uh, Macintosh has no viruses, right? And then 2006, this, uh, this great article comes, and after that, uh, a lot of other articles come, and oh my god, everything is, is, is crazy, so we have viruses on Mac. So the, the, the thing with, with Mac and Linux and viruses is that the user base was so small that uh, bugs uh, were found, it, it was less likely to find, to find a bug, and of course the bad guys weren't as interested to invest money because, uh, well, black market is also a business. Uh, and they're not interested to invest their money into, into small return. Uh, it's, it's changing, you see. So, we may have to look at that, but I already discussed this, uh, this, uh, thought experiment I had. Should I divide number of vulnerabilities in WordPress by the market share or should I multiply? Okay, let's take a look at WordPress specifically. So, WordPress has security vulnerabilities. It's true. So what kind of vulnerabilities are we talking about? Uh, so yesterday, end of, end of September this year, half of vulnerabilities were discovered in core. And for this slide, I'm sure that it's because of the user base. Because every WordPress user uses the core, but not far from every WordPress user uses some plugin, some specific plugin or some specific theme. So, this indicates to me that there are quite a lot of undiscovered vulnerabilities here and here. It means zero days, which you can, which you can uh, fall for. It's a risk that you have to take into account. Uh, by types of vulnerabilities, so orange for plugins again, green for themes, and, uh, and blue for core. We see that cross-site scripting is the most common one discovered over the years while we have WordPress. It's followed by uh, server-side request forgery and then SQL injection, which is not good. Uh, having SQL injection is, is a bad thing, but uh, you see, core is not the culprit there. So core is kind of okay, but we have to understand that we will have, as the previous speaker said, we will have vulnerabilities in WordPress. So we will discuss what can we do about that in the last part, which will start in a couple minutes. But now some more statistics. So 9%. 9% of all themes have had at least one vulnerability. Not good. Uh, here is the uh, antitop of, of, of uh, well, discovered and fixed vulnerabilities. So maybe, you know, Echelon fixed their last vulnerability and now it's going to be fine, but maybe they just don't know how to code shit and you shouldn't use them. I don't know. Uh, 3% of all plugins have had vulnerabilities. So, 
check out uh, check out position number five. Uh, WordPress manual actually recommends you install it. <laughs> Again, same goes for plugins, of course. Well, surely the core is better, right? It's it's better written, everyone uses it. So it's it's secure, right? No. So here's a nice graph I made. I'm very proud of this graph. So on top, uh, we have number of vulnerabilities discovered until yesterday in a specific version of WordPress core. That's the orange line. The drops are the versions being maintained in parallel by the WordPress community, which means they have patched everything yesterday and now there are no discovered vulnerabilities. It doesn't mean it's secure, it means just we have to wait until vulnerabilities get discovered, unfortunately. And the terrifying thing is the blue line. So for each WordPress version, I worked with my data, and for each WordPress version, I looked at the last identified publicly available fixed vulnerability for that version. And I looked at version where this vulnerability was not there anymore, when it was fixed. So I compared, uh, so let's say, uh, I'm just gonna give a random example, that's not true prob probably. So let's say 3.7 had a vulnerability, and it was it was fixed in 4.12. So I took the two dates, two release dates, and subtracted them. So the blue line is when the last known vulnerability was finally fixed for a specific version, since its release. So. Those are months, not days. Well, yeah. So take that into account, guys. Uh, I, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, I couldn't uh, prove to myself that WordPress is, is secure. I had to. Well, it resulted in me proving that there are some problems in there. So, final part of the presentation. Let's see what can we do to make all this go away, or at least make it better. <clears throat> in this slide, I will talk about um, theory of audit process. So, for web applications, this is what we do in, in, in our company. So, this is the audit process. The things you can do yourself will follow later. When a client comes to us, we start with defining the scope of the test and doing threat modeling. So, what are you afraid of? Are you a shop selling socks online? Are you a legal company that has separated, uh, I mean, are you a, a law firm that has separated your web page from all other systems and it's just your business card? Are you a military organization uh, creating weapons and exporting them? It defines your threat model and defines either we say you have to quit doing this WordPress stuff or, or WordPress is okay, we're going to fix it for you. We're going we're gonna to make sure that it's secure enough for your threat model. Then we sign liability waiver, non-disclosure agreement, and the contract. And then we start the test. We start testing on the network level. We look at the routers, at your infrastructure that go to your server or, or to the server that uh, you have rented from your hosting provider. We see if it's possible to, if for an attacker to do some, something bad there. Then we look at the machine level test. We look at your server. We look at how your server looks. How is the operating system of the server? Is it up to date? Is it secure? Can we find some holes in there? After that, we go to service level tests. If your, uh, if your web server is running publicly accessible MySQL, we'll let you know. If it's running some jargon, for example, which, which, should not, which should not be running for 20 years, actually, it's, it's, you know, jargon is a crazy protocol. It shouldn't have been invented. It's basically a protocol where you connect to a server and it just generates random characters for you. In UDP, so uh, great, great, uh, great thing to to attack someone else. Anyway, so we look at uh, the Apache or Nginx version here, and of course, real vulnerabilities on your specific server. After that, we move to application level tests. We look at um, at your WordPress in this instance, right? Um, and we look at configuration of your WordPress, uh, and we look at what you have configured in there. We look at security of the plugins. Um, none of the clients so far have agreed. I mean, we, 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 we kind of say against it. We don't really want to do a full WordPress core uh, white box security audit of the code. 
but we say, okay, if you want to, we can really do, here's, here's a six digit number. Um, no, no client so far has agreed to that. So we just, we, we just looked at, at the publicly, uh, publicly available and, and also privately available knowledge about, uh, bugs in core themes and plugins here. Then we draft a report and finally client debriefing, a very important part when, where we talk with the client, uh, one to one and we explain our suggestions in the report. Because of course, if you have bugs, they need to be fixed, and it's not it's not always trivial. So the tests themselves are usually for web application carried according to OWASP ASVS. Um, here is from uh, the the new version ASVS version three. Everything we go through. So this is for all web applications. Uh, mobile basically means mobile applications um, that uh, that use your web server. Web services means like uh, AJAX or or or, or whatever, whatever web service uh, configuration you have in there between your client application if you, and, and the server if you have a client application. And configuration I already talked about. So, uh, 17 and 18 does not apply to WordPress directly. But this, this is what we go through. Okay, so, um, let's see if I can do a demo here. Um, previous, uh, previous person already talked about VP scan. I don't have to do that again. Um, I'm just gonna demonstrate it to you. Okay, we have the image. Okay, I can't see anything, but, um, so. Okay, so we have this VP scan, right? You installed, the, uh, you installed first, of course. And it gives you um, some handy tips on how to use it. And it's super easy. So as you saw in my slide, you can do plugin and theme detection, you can enumerate users, and so on. Um, well, so let's try it. Yesterday, um, in, in, in speaker's event, um, Peter is the one of one of the guys at at uh, at company called Turn. Uh, kind of asked me if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be de de demonstrating this on on their server. I wasn't planning to, but since he asked, <laughs> okay, let's see. Look, you just uh, set by URL, and uh, now here I will be enumerating the plugins, P. Oh, nice, nice. Web application firewall. Okay. User agent Mozilla. Okay. So we we fooled uh, the web application firewall by specifying a user agent of a normal browser, and we are getting some uh, uh, plugins which, by version, seem to be vulnerable. Huh. So the core seems to be vulnerable here. Um, oh well. And then it's also going to enumerate the plugins here, all all the popular ones. Uh, we can, of course, change the settings of the plugin to enumerate all the plugins. There are, like, uh, lots of them. Uh, 4,000 4, was the seams, and, and 47,000 was the plugin setting. So this will take some time here. And we have, we have time, good. Okay. Um, Maybe we will get back to this when it's done. Let's say, let's say that. Okay, if we can get the lights back, please. Okay, so that's demo. Okay, so what can you do about it? Except, you know, hiring an expensive security consultant. 
uh, follow these tips and make sure to study the material I linked in the last slide <coughs> after the final slide. Um, so this is not a checklist. It's not, it's not like you go through this and you're safe. These are some of the tips that you should take a look at. Harden your server, harden your services. Harden your Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, or Windows if you have Capital Windows. Make sure you have secure configurations for the services themselves. Use encryption both when managing the site via web, so use TLS, HTTPS, right? Uh, and, and do not use FTP. Use SSH or SFTP. You can use VPN also. That's, that's a great solution. You can specify your VP admin to not be available over the internet and only be available through your VPN, virtual private network. Have an offsite backup that is up to date and away from your, from your site where you have your server. Remember, security is not only about confidentiality. It's also about availability and you protecting your data if something bad happens to, to the data. And, by the way, RAID is not a backup. If a user deletes something, RAID only works when your hard drive dies. If a user deletes something, it's gone. Uh, remove unused themes and plugins. Enable auto-updates. Well, you can break stuff. I mean, it's easy to break stuff by, by doing auto-updates, but at least you're secure, right? Uh, uh, last one, I'm not really sure. It's a good idea, but, but you know, WordPress has auto-updates. If you do not want to manage it, if you don't have time, then better enable them. User will, users will call you if the website doesn't work. Uh, some more tips. Limit access to VP admin. For example, if you go to our, uh, our website, you can, you, you're welcome to try. Open up VP admin, see what happens. Verify file permissions so that only files that need to be readable are readable and only files that need to be writable are writable. Delete readme HTML and install PHP. Just for good measure, right? Uh, there's also a nice, a nice tip that I learned only uh, when I was researching this presentation. Move your VP config file one direction level up outside your public HTML. It, WordPress, new versions of WordPress should still be able to find it, but it will not be on your web route. So if your PHP fails, people will not be able to access it directly, or if your access controls fail. Set your encryption keys in VP config. Unique phrase. Each of them different unique phrase. Consider installing these two plugins. Those are uh, better than better WordPress security, security-wise. Uh, security audit log simply provides you more logging information that you can take a look at about what's been happening with your WordPress. And Security Ninja does like 40 checks for you. You press a button and it checks some, some of these things for you. And then you can reconfigure them. If your page is relatively static, do not expose WordPress to the world. You can use some hacky stuff, for example, HTTRAC, to download the HTML. So you don't have content, you're not, you, if you don't have comments, if you don't have any user interaction, what you can do is simply download the WordPress from internal site and serve HTML to the user. That's what we do for, for some clients. Um, and ask for help if you have any difficulties with any of these. And finally, and finally, not because of the last point, but because after you've done all of that, request a penetration test, not to waste everyone's time. Okay, so we're done here. Thank you very much. The next slide contains the links. Um, I can put that up here if anyone wants to take a photo, but again, slides will be available tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, this is from uh, VP Vulnerability Database. Uh, that's the... Okay, I have to I have to add it here. Yeah, I missed it. I will add it here in the link. It's VP VulnDB. Uh, VP VulnDB. And of course, it contains only fixed ones. But since WordPress, when fixes vulnerabilities, it's easily visible and appears in changelog. Uh, that's, where the, that's where this comes from. I will, I will add the link here. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give another round of applause for Mr. Solomon.